So good morning. I want to show you my latest Jupiter image. Nothing particularly special, but look at the telescope I used to capture it. Now this is the Blackett Observatory at Marlborough College. This is a 10 inch Cook refractor built in 1860 and it came to Marlborough College in 1935. It was refurbished in 2002, so it has go-to hand controller and motor drives, which I think makes it the oldest computer controlled telescope in the world. My host is Gavin James, who unfortunately is not wearing Victorian top hat and tails, but he's kindly let me come up and use the telescope. So we're going to do some visual observing first, and then we'll put the camera on the telescope and do some high resolution imaging of Jupiter. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm with Gavin James. Hello, Gavin. Hi. Gavin Hello. is very kindly opened up the 10 inch Thomas Cook. Thomas refractor. Cook. Refractor. Not the holiday people. Yeah. No, it's uh, the, of York, Cook and Sons of York. So we're going to again take the dust cover off. Let's go. So we've got to go up the health and safety uh, correct steps. And then we can take the cover off. And then we also need to remove the dust cover and then this cover from the uh, from the finder scope, which is a nice little telescope in its own right. Well, Gavin's doing that, that's the old ladder over there, which really was a widow maker. <laughs> yeah, a bit awkward. Right, I'm going to turn it on, turn Ooh. the drive on. It should be calibrated from last night, which will make the go-to system hopefully work properly. But the next thing, we need to go into night mode. Oh, okay. So that's the shutter opens, that booming noise. Who'd have thought England in September would be so pleasant? <laughs> right, good old sky safari. Get some coordinates. We are going to go to 20 hours of light ascension. 41 minutes. And 33, 15, 06. So you're mechanically typing the coordinates into the computer? Exactly, into the handset and hit enter. And off it goes. Shouldn't be too far off that I was looking at Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune last night and fantastic conditions and really good views. I think I managed to see seven moons around Saturn. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's a little bit of averted imagination going on with it one or two at the end but yeah i think it was the most i've ever seen so we've right got a now, 10 inch what f ratio is it remind me 10 inch it's an f15 so yes. 3.8 meter focal length 10 inch uh, refractor so a doublet lens it's one of the very earliest doublet lenses that that was one of cook's uh, features that he almost invented the doublet lens just by slicing it to get a, a part in two with a tiny little airspace in between seemed to improve the, uh, the the ability of the lens. So a 10 inch f15 refractor with a go-to mount. <laughs> yeah uh, but it hasn't got the automatic roof that I have to. Ooh, I can just see Jupiter through the slips. Yeah good. There it is. Yeah it's there, there it somewhere. is. And we'll get the observing platform in place. We'll go up and see how far off it is. Hopefully it's um, pretty well. Oh, there she is. Straight in the eyepiece. Straight in the eyepiece. We've got quite a wide field of view. This is, I don't know, I can't even remember what it is. 40 mil eyepiece, something like that. Maybe a bit, um, it's a bit wider. About three quarters of a degree um, field of view. 41 mil, a big teleview panoptic job. Wow. It's, yeah, well you need a decent um, eyepiece, don't you? If you're gonna use a, a 10 inch refractor, you better have a decent eyepiece. And I can see 
One, two, three, at least four moons. And that's still this sort of middle late twilight, isn't it? Yeah. No, yeah, that's nice. The focus of it is shocking. It works, but it's not quite your 10 to 1 feather touch. It's, uh, it didn't come with a USB port, did it? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely engraving of Thomas Cook and Sons, though. <laughs> right, Mark, I think it's your turn to oh, have a look. Star. Thank you. I could hog it for quite a long time enjoying that view. I think you better have a go. So up the ladder we go. Yeah, be careful. Health and safety. It's quite a cunning ladder, but as you, your weight goes on it, it sinks down oh, and stays in place. That's cool. So do you see the two I could just Yeah, I can of... see the two. If I look at the planet, I get the kind of averted vision for the two that are close together. And then there's one up at about one o'clock, isn't there? Yes. One, two o'clock. Destination, minus 14, a little closer to the horizon there. Yeah, no three. Equator. Are we ready? Yeah. Off we go. Such a smooth motor, isn't it? The way it kind of ramps up to speed. So you want me to move the dome? Yeah, go on. That's your job. So I, I forget how many tons. I've forgotten all my stats. That um, I haven't done any tours in here for ages. But it's a ton or so of roof. A ton of roof. Yeah, and see see whether you can move that. Should I go that right way? I can't. Yes. I'll yes. Go, right go go go. Then get it on the on that edge or near-ish. Chat when you're ready. Yeah, that's about right. That's Ooh. good. That's good. Oh yes. Very bright through through the slit, I can see. So, how is the view of a Jupiter in a ten-inch? And what magnification? So we have we've got what's this? Um, here's my head torch. I think was it twenty-eight mil? Twenty-eight. So we basically a mm, little less than half. It's uh, it was um, three thousand mil. 3,800. 3,800. 3,800 divided by 28. Are you on the calculator? I ought to know really. 136. There we go, 136 times. Yeah. And the seeing is really steady tonight. It is really good. Okay, four Galilean moons, two very close to each other, out far to the, to the left, whether that's east or west, I don't even know. Two on the other side, I would guess Io being the closest. No moon transits, no, no shadow transits. Really nice banding on the planet, but, and I don't think I can see the GRS. So you've got Callisto to the left. Oh, and Ganymede. Callisto and Ganymede touching. Yes. Part of the, well, my screen. Are they to the left or to the right? They're right? to the left. Are you flipped? I must have flipped that. Yeah, good. That's perfect. You yes, got, you're right so, there closest in. Oh, really? And I O is I on the right. And to the far right. Oh, that's interesting. So, Chris and Ganymede are very close, aren't they? Well, they are. So we'll have a look in a moment. But no, no, I can't see the red spot. Lots of good banding, but no spot. So, in an hour's time, they're, yeah, they Well, that would be quite interesting to, to kind of follow its progress and see the dynamic system in operation. So closest approach is about an hour's time, ten o'clock. Okay. Transit, probably a couple of hours, isn't it? Well, an hour and a half by an hour, I would imagine. About one o'clock, if I remember rightly, Okay. the other night. Yeah. And what time is it now? It's ten o'clock. Great red spot comes on at two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Whether we're still here at that hour. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Mark, you have a look. Okay, I'll do that closest. See what you reckon. Still, oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> oh, yes, look at the two moons. Yeah. And you can see one smaller than the other. Yeah. You can see the size of the different, yeah. different tiny little disks. Can you see any colour differences across the four? Or are they all it's just subtle. quite off white, shimmering blobs? At first glance, I'm going to say they're all off white. Yeah. But the two on the left ones, 
the two that were close together, which I've now forgotten. That's Ganymede, no, um, yeah, Ganymede and Callisto, which was which though? So Ganymede will clearly be the bottom one, yeah. because it's yeah. almost twice the diameter, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, well done. Into the pot, doesn't he? But we will notice Callisto and Ganymede changing over the course of 45 minutes an hour. We will really clearly see a change yeah. in their position. And that's one of the absolute beauties of observing Jupiter, isn't it? That you can see how dynamic it is. That some of those deep sky targets, they're static. Yeah, so yeah, so if we looked at the Andromeda Galaxy today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, whatever. Exactly, it's the same, whereas you've really got stuff going on with, how did you describe this one? This, this is, is the rock chick. Yeah, Jupiter's yeah. the rock chick, isn't yeah. it? And yeah, absolutely hammering out those power cords. Now, when I was first up to the top of the ladder, it was very good seeing, and it suddenly got all shimmery. Really? It does well. affect your night vision, doesn't it? I can yeah, it's, it's not really bright, isn't it? That is beautiful. Gosh. And great banding. I mean, yes. Really good. And when the scenes just come yes. that steady, you yeah. can see all the subtle features. Yeah. yeah exactly. All the little features in the banding. Yeah. Maybe 160 years old, but gosh, yes, that's bright. So you're up in the observatory looking at Neptune with a 10 inch refractor while at home your own observatory is gathering data. That's brilliant. Exactly. That is the wonderful thing about having the, the, uh, the remote operable observatory back home. There. So you check it does on your phone? It doesn't, yeah. It just dialed in quickly to make sure it's all working well. As one does? Yeah. And we've got quite a bright star up above. Have a look and see what that is. But yeah, that, I reckon I'm getting a bit of a bluey tinge off that now. In fact, I would say definitely. You have a look at the zone magnification. So that's a 35 mil rather than 28. Let's see what you reckon. Oh, some idiots left a red light. Yes, you can see the colour difference. Yeah, yeah, you can. And then I was going to look at the, the field stars. There's a very bright star at the top there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very bright. It's probably Mag 10 or something. Yeah. <laughs> so that is Mag 8.9. <laughs> this is funny how it is. It's bright, isn't it? Yeah. So, yes, you can see the stars on there as now have points of light, aren't you? That's yes. Just light from yes. the object 
It is pretty mind blowing. So, so yeah, yeah. you'll notice I'm trying to avoid any idea of an actual answer to your yeah. question. <laughs> I remember one time last year when we were looking, I was looking at Mars about three or four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So well before its opposition. So it was, you know, August the time, time. And I thought, of all the six billion people in the world, how many people are looking at Mars at this moment? And it must be a few tens. Right, so we was on chat. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. look. See if I can pretend that I can see it moving. What do they call it in deep sky observing? Inverted imagination. Exactly. It's very important. Neat segue. Do you think we should have a look at a deep sky old ladder trying to see, trying to get to the eyepiece? It's, uh, yeah, it can be challenging. Joys of a big refractor. Yeah. Have you seen the one in Cambridge that has a chair? It's on like a sliding uh, mark. Uh, so it's like a, like you can lie horizontally or you can always go up to the upright. That sounds good. There used to be a chair associated with this, a kind of a recliner, a leather bound wooden recliner thing, which I think is in the College Archive building somewhere. Oh, so we don't need the ladder then? No, no we don't. Right. Can we see anything? Oh, yeah. Let me centre it up. You have a look through that. Will do, will do, right. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> that is good, isn't it? Now the globs work well through this. Very bright core, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Going up very quickly down to Yeah, the kind of wispy outer edges. It's relatively bright, isn't it? Plus six, just over six. Second, when you put the inverted vision on, you really yeah. do. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? That is beautiful, isn't it? Now you can put your camera on that, can't you? Yep, uh, yes, a, a kind of high ISO short exposure, because the tracking is not very stable. It's fine visually, really? it's fine, but it, it will sway a bit left and right, so it's, it's, oh. it's not great, for, you know, it's not very steady. No, my half hour <laughs> O3 exposures down at, um, at the River Park Observatory are not what this was designed for at all. Well, 1860. So what are we going for now? This was M31 first? Yep, off to have a look at the, the core of the Andromeda Galaxy. So we'll be able to see, oh, we'll have to find out how many globulars we can pick up. <laughs> Size of this beast. Do you want me to do the uh, thing with Bob? The roof, yeah, go on, yes, please. Oh, I thought if I'm putting the right one on the wrong one, that would be really sharp. Is that the right one? Yeah, that's good. So we're just looking at M31, see the spiral arms, now calibrating the drive. Where are we going next? We're going to go and look at a double star. So Almac in oh. Andromeda, Gamma Andromeda. Really what the, uh, the, the telescope was designed to do was look at double stars. So if this isn't any good... 
Just going to its own home, is it? Great and very steady. I'm impressed with the, the viewing conditions. This There's a real golden colour, the, the larger one. So, Gavin's just going to show us something interesting on here. So, obviously, when this was the first in use, it was to measure the separation of double stars and complete the Struve catalogue and so on and uh, had a reticle for the measurements. There's this, this little wheel that opens up this neat little hole here and couldn't really work out what that was all about to begin with, but it transpires that that is to illuminate the reticle. So you put the candle holder uh, <laughs> up against the, the hole, light comes in and illuminates the reticle so you can make your measurements. Fantastic little bit of Victorian engineering there, though. very neat. So we don't have our smoke lantern though to make the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid, I don't know where that is this evening. No. It, and it's not a cigar cutter. <laughs> Gosh, this is so bright. Oh wow. So you and Mary? Yeah, and those moons have changed a bit. What camera are you using? What's the oh, oh, right, yeah. 224 one shot colour. Okay. So that's literally the ABC now. Yeah. I took the flip mirror out when we're right, not yeah, mm -hmm. there. Because trying to get it on that tiny little chip is such a fab. Yeah, exactly. We'll see, yeah, see if you can do it. Yes. I don't think I've ever used a telescope that's physically so big. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little unwieldy. But. You know those people who put like, those suitcase stops only in some of their yeah. travel luggage? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you'd be struggling to get this in the suitcase. There's no doubt. And then lifting up that suitcase. Right. Now let's start. So I've put it on to centre, so it'll be quite slow. Oh, perfect. And yes. up, down, left, right. Obviously. I can see the sky blow from... Jupiter. Right, okay. Have a play. You will now discover what I mean about the vagaries of the mount. And the, you press and press and press, and then all of a sudden it starts going. Oh, I see. So it's not very smooth, so yeah, yeah just be warned. Maybe I'll just do it the other way. And then there's a lot of backlash. But you'll get I can see it. the sky though, but I just can't quite get it. No, this is always the time consuming part of planetary imaging. Just trying to find the damn thing. Faster speed. Now oh, that might be a moon. So, that means we need to go up or down, doesn't it? Because what about the first? There she is. There she is. There she is. isn't it? That wasn't a reflection, that was a moon. Yeah. Right, and then, just to help me, I won't rotate it so it's facing the right direction. Yeah. I'm going to focus now. Um, yes, I think it's going to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Oh, so that was got the star in there as well. Yes. Oh, nice. so, there we go. Okay, this is looking nice. So, let's set this up there. It's just magical. There we go. Is it 100%? Well, that's the bonus we get. Wowzers. Well, I need to drop the game down even further. Good. Oh! Whoa! Okay. Oh, it's the long yeah, two moves. Yeah. Do you want to go slower? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, so wait for that last to come yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. That's looking. Really stable compared to sometimes. Oh, something happened in the one we got. Is that just a drive? Possibly. It will kind of catch up with itself as long as you're pressing the right direction. That's all. <laughs> oh, yes, there we go. There we go. And it's a back. Yeah. There she goes. Uh, up or down now, isn't it? I think that crescent that was, was a reflection. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, now it's drifting off again. Yeah, it will. But uh, just let it catch up with itself. Oh, uh, okay. Then. And then. Tune mode. Yeah, which. Were you going that way? Oh, yes, is that the wrong way? No, we just need to kind of. Take that back. Yeah. Oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Yeah, ah, uh, good. Some half steps in here. I reckon that's good. Mm -hmm. So, what I've done, I've lined the ABC up that bit there has to be horizontal. Yeah. Okay, so you've got that yeah. horizontal. Yeah. So, if you like, the, for the two levers, oh, that's vanished. Okay, so this is another thing about the ABC. Yeah. It twiddle, it sort of just. So what I need is if I put it on colour mode, yep. oh, that meant that just looks awful because it super it sets up. You must be yes, honest. there we are. So you still have quite okay. a strong blue. Yes, so yes. It's quite strong. So we need some more and we can use these circles. Yeah, okay. okay. And then what we do is we say, well, let's put more twiddling. Yeah. Let's go to there. And that's what we can walk any closer. No, not really. Oh, you have to do it. Oh, 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 oh. That's actually much better. Oh, that's much better. Oh. So you've got to keep up. There's a, there we are. So, you have some, so yes, up. Yeah. So there's not much now of a blue tint. No. Wow. Yeah. So it, it's correcting the that's aromatic right. yeah. evaporation as, as well as. Yeah, I mean, you, you're never quite in no. all jumping around in the turbulence. So that's that. So that's on too far now. Yeah. The circle is oh, oh, So we will leave it up now. The circles are almost overlap now. Yeah. And we've got wow. two moves. So I propose just go just to it. <laughs> yeah. So what we're going to do is remember to turn that off. Turn yeah. that off. And then I press that button there. And that reduces it down to that side. And then I'll do two minute capture. We're going to do yeah. 105 frames per second. Wow. And the moment you press capture, the scene would go to rubbish. Yeah, guaranteed. But you can hear the, the, yeah, the wind. The wind. Yeah. I'm really fascinated to see what you manage. So, and this is the good thing about planetary imaging, is that you, your your pixels can't wander at all in the mm -hmm. If you have pixels wandering off in a how long the exposures are, they're, they're really lovely. Whereas this one does around all over the screen, they go, oh, I haven't quite played with line very well tonight, I'll just yeah. move them back to the middle. Exactly, because you're catching, capturing 
for such short exposures, essentially. Yeah. You can see the scene now as it comes yeah. and goes. But there are some nice moments. And that's what the software will do, so... Yeah, to pick out those nice moments, yeah. If I'm capturing 100 frames a second... Well, you're going to have a lot of frames. That'll be 12,000 yeah. frames. So if I start taking frame rate, it should be higher. That's obviously just not coming out of the USB cable fast enough. It, we're shooting at 5 milliseconds. Yeah, yes. So it should be 200. But obviously it's just taken a, a struggle to get down the USB. Yeah. Wow. And then what we can do is you can go back to the full screen and yep. catch, catch yep, the images as well. Yeah, exactly. And then bump this in. Now, if I mount at home, I'd zoom in a little bit more than that because yeah. of course I'm home yes, and Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe just a bit of Yeah, yeah. And what I normally do then is just do yeah. two or three. Yeah. And I do, every time I deliberately break the focus and then refocus, and then hopefully one of them is going to be significantly better, yeah. Ah, so that's, that's looking point. really nice now. So I'd say a smidge back from there. Do you reckon there? No, I think it was better at what that's there. Yeah, 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 that's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, that's a good patch of scenes. It's got to yeah, press record. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to. Oh, my, actually, yeah. So, yeah, well, I know we'll hit around around there, about 80%. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 70% to 80%. So, you've got the yeah. limbs of signal then. Yes. Look at that. Now, what it does. It's not necessarily the scene that's changed when we press record. It just records a uh, much lower okay. frame rate. Okay, because it is, yeah, it's using its power yeah, to power grab the, the frame. Okay, okay, that's good. This could turn out nice. I hope so. Ah, to, well, you must share oh, the yeah, image. Oh, yeah, so If yeah. I can put them on the website, yeah, the, the shots that you've done with the stills as well. Yeah, please That please would please be really, really good. You've looked after me so nicely, it's so. Oh, I didn't realise I've been sounding up a ladder first for five minutes. Yes, you got it. Like, you went almost fell on the ground. Yeah. Um, we have the MCBO APOW, Astro Photo of the Week. Oh, do you? And this could be a contender. Yeah. What's that meant for? So the Marlborough College Black oh, Observatory. Cool. Now, we've just revamped the website. Oh, okay. Launched it very, very recently. And that's one of the, the new, new features I've introduced. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Taken at, it's going to be taken with the telescope or it, uh, anything. Anything else, yeah. I think. Ideally, it has some relevance to yeah. Marlborough and so on, but no, anything. Tracking the can, you get these moments and you can see it with your eye. Yeah, yeah. Of sharpness, clarity. Yeah, and that's what they were saying, like until high speed cameras and digital processing, until the 90s, 2000s, visual. Sketches could your brain could pick up. Oh, there's a clear bit and right, pull that by that the and yeah. ignore the other stuff. Yeah. You sit there for 10, 20 minutes, whatever, and you get a few moments of brief clarity and you make the sketch. Yeah. So we have finished. Right, so let's go to a wide angle. So we've got those two moons to the left, which were Io and Europa, if I'm wrong rightly. Yes, and then Ganymede and Callisto. Take this side again. Yes. Over on the other side. So this must be quite a way out. So yes. if I put, if I press down to the ground, that's my bit to move it up. The screen, let's just nervously come on. Please. Quite a way off, like sort of several times firm.
so that you're not going to get it all in. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll so that's you. max resolution. That's max gain, so it's max noise. Okay. Amplification. But as in that's the full chip. Yes, that's clear field of view. Yeah. So if you can see the size bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, and the brightness difference. Yes. Yeah, really clear. You have to do a one of, the, one of the videos I yes, I'd have to write through black yeah. space. <laughs> <laughs> So if you look on my YouTube channel, yeah. years ago, like 2014, I recorded a occultation of IO Academy uh, with the telescope in the garden. Uh, so if I just shoot that then, yeah. so you can it's like, come on, shh, go the other way, come on. Uh, the hand rate's oh, over. There we go, all the way back. Right, so that was on 300. Oops, let's press that. Do that. 300. There we go. So yep. exposure is still there. I'm not even going to touch the ADC, but I will just reduce the frame size just to save, save the hard drive. Okay, there interesting. Okay, and that makes it that big. Let's go. So how did you draw that rectangle? Just with the mouse. Right, okay, so you, you just can draw either type on the pixels yeah, in yeah. Or you can just draw a... a so if you've got something there, like yeah. if you're looking at the moon, you think, oh, that's interesting. Okay. And it says, do you want to... Annoyingly, sometimes you brush against it when you're doing something else, and it says, "Do you want to make it this?" You're like, no, no, no! I wanted it like it was. <laughs> it was all fine. And I do quite enjoy having the larger field of view because it doesn't matter now if it wanders around a bit. No, you've got a lot of leeway, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. And to be honest, we're still at 97 frames a second, so maybe we should have just done it that way the first time round. <laughs> Get the whole lot. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? That is significantly higher frame rate. USB three, yes, must be. Yeah, yeah. And really interesting with the ADC. Yeah, it makes that's a difference. Made a difference. It? So I deliberately defocus it, and I look at the moon, and then I look at the moons. I look at the disc and the surface markings. Right, and try and get the moons as sharp as possible. Yeah, so I've gone past it. Yeah. And when the scene's bad, it just nothing, yeah, nothing you do it. does right. Yeah. Yeah. There we ooh, go. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, oh. I, th I think that's quite tolerable. Very. Let's move you back there. And then you hope that just one of them. Quite. So you need okay, a coincidence. Yeah, so I can see it. When you press you need, it, degrades. Yes, yeah. the, it puts all the effort into stacking. Sorry, I'm capturing. Yeah, good. So you need a coincidence of good focus, yeah. good seeing, good thermals inside the telescope. Quite. Everything's going to be perfect. But it does happen. So how far away? Jupiter's like an hour light time, isn't it, or something? Something yes, like well, that. So five that, AU, yes. So the light travels all the way across space absolutely perfectly. And it hits the Earth's atmosphere, and that last <laughs> millionth of a second is when it yeah. all goes to goes yeah. wrong. Yeah. Damn humans. And when I went to the Winter Star Party, there was a guy there who had a 12-inch F8 Newton big old planetary telescope, mm. and about three or four in the morning, the sea was just still, mm. and with his Fine over here, looking at oh, you could see beautiful. you could see the storm clouds inside the great red spots. Wow. And it looked wow. like one of those Voyager photos yes. with yeah. all the wow. detail. And just that sat there. Is, it's uh, unbeatable really, isn't it? And it just goes to show no matter what your kit is, no matter how dedicated you are, if the scene's not playing ball, there's nothing you can do about it. it. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. That you are at the mercy of it, aren't you? Yeah. And I think, well, sometimes I just use those as shape down lights, just go out there and check the kit works, check the... Exactly. And I think, nah. And that's the delight of an observatory, isn't yes. it? That it just doesn't matter, that you haven't spent half an hour <laughs> putting everything up. And, and it means that you go and just check. All right, that's the two minutes then. Should we tear her down? Are you happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Okay. Great. Okay. Wow, well I can't wait to see the results. What I'll do then, if I stop that. Yeah, mine's on the inside of, yeah, I think we're, we're not on the table. Piece drawer, with extra mouse dropping. Lovely. Yeah, that's it. I've never seen an eyepiece case quite, quite like this one. <laughs>
that we've, you know, all the bits and pieces. That's brilliant, isn't it? Love it, love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gavin. I've yeah. really enjoyed today. Good. Well, so have I. So Real I pleasure. Really have. No, it's good. <laughs> So Gavin's also asked me to highlight that the observatory is not open for general visitors but you can join as a friend of the observatory and that means you can come up on the open days on the open evenings and visit the telescope.